Something that often causes a little bit of confusion when you're looking at uh, T accounts is the notation that's used to find out net balances. This really is just something that is a notation problem, I think, rather than um, an actual problem of understanding. But let's take a quick look at this example here. We've got this example of a T account, which is bank account number, a particular bank account, and we've posted through the month a number of transactions. Now, at any point in time, at the end of the month, what management are likely to want and what we're going to need to produce a thing called a trial balance, which we'll look later on, isn't the detail. We don't want to look at every single transaction there. I mean, if, for example, you imagine your own personal bank account, um, what you're interested in today is literally what the balance is today on that bank account. You don't necessarily want to go through the story of every piece of income you've ever had going to that bank account and every expense. You just want to know what the net balance is. So really we can kind of say that any balance at all, whether it's statement of financial position or whether it's statement of comprehensive income, in this case it's a statement of financial position item, what we want to do is basically just have some sort of notation that works out the total balances. Now the way to do this is to basically take all of the transactions, both on the debit side and the credit side, and just add up both sides. Okay, in this situation when we add up the debit side, we see that the debit side comes to a total of 10,322. If we take a look at the total on the credit side, these three items together here, apologies, so these three items here total 6576. Six. So it's fairly clear if you take a look on the debit side here, the total debits, in other words, cash coming in and the increase in the asset is 10322. Two. If we had an opening balance of zero, well, that means that the balance at the end of the period is 3746. Now, the way to kind of get to this figure, which is what we want, we want to record the fact that on the debit side there is a net balance of 3746. The conventional notation for getting there is to say, well, if you've got a balance on the brought down side, then that's because there's a gap, if you like, on the credit side, the figure that I just highlighted here, of 3746. Now, we've got this idea of a balance carried down. Some people get very kind of excited about whether it's carried down or carried forward and so on. I have to say, I, I personally couldn't really care less. It's... Uh, I think the strict story is that anything that's carried forward basically is during a period and carried down is at the end of the period. It really doesn't matter. It's the same kind of approach that we're saying. We'd have to, to make this to balance. Imagine it's like an old-fashioned set of scales where you've got like on the debit side one set of weights and on the credit side another set of weights. To make the thing balance, you'd have to put in this kind of counterweight. That's how I remember the C thing, by the way. It's C is carried down. That's the counterweight you'd need to put into one side here to actually work out what the balance is. If you take that out, you end up with a net balance on the brought down side, in other words, the actual net balance, hence the B, in this situation, 3746. So it kind of seems strange. It's not a double entry, this. Um, all we're saying here is, as a way of kind of working out what the larger of the two sides is. And the only way you can do this, by the way, is to add up all of the debits, first of all, and see what that totals. Maybe you make a little note somewhere. And then add up all of the credits, as we've done here, and see what that totals. We take the larger of the two. By taking the larger of the two, you put that basically into the kind of subtotals, these kind of tram lines that we've got there, and say, OK, well, we need to find a balancing item as the difference between those. That's 3746 on the counterweight side. That's kind of what you need just to weigh the difference between the two to work out what the net figure, figure is. If you take that counterweight out, it's going to tip back again with the balance of 3746, which in this situation, you know, is on the debit side. OK, now, of course, it could go the other way around. You could have something which is a net balance on the, uh, the a carried down balance on the debit side, which therefore means you've got more credits coming in than debits. So all it is is a way of kind of summarising information. It's tempting to start taking shortcuts here, by the way, and use your own presentation of this. I really wouldn't, because one of the prime uses of double entry is actually to work out what has gone wrong. So... For example, quite often in a thing called incomplete records, and that's something that's in the syllabus later on, you're actually, one of the things you know is what the carry down balance is. You know what your year end balance is, and you're trying to work out, for example, how much money perhaps has been stolen in a period. So, in other words, an unexpected item that's on the credit side. Now, the only way you can use T accounts to find that is if you follow this fairly strict notation. It does seem strange at first, but try to get used to it because of the fact that it will just save you some time. Now, again, I think probably the way to look at it, just go through a couple of examples. I'm aware from past experience that this is something people often find very strange. Um, so, again, it's like so many things in double entry bookkeeping, really. Just by repetition is probably the way to get the best answers. It really isn't that very strange. All we're trying to work out is the net balance. Try to make the scales, metaphorically scales, kind of uh, balance out. The thing that you put in as a counterweight on one side to make them balance, that's the net balance on the other side.